Protein is probably the most overrated and underrated micronutrient that ever existed. You might be consuming too much if you are a fitness enthusiast or not enough if you are not. There's a lot of advice out there about how much protein to eat with suggestions ranging widely. So let's break down what you really need to know in very, very simple terms. How much do you really need to eat to build muscles? If you're not deeply into fitness and search online for how much protein you'll need, you'll probably find the World Health Organization's recommendation of 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. This amount is generally considered sufficient for the average person who isn't really focused on weightlifting or building muscles. But this leads to an intriguing question. If you are interested in building muscles, is it still enough? Or how does your protein need change if your goal is to gain muscles and strength? The most common answer you will find in the fitness community is one gram per pound of body weight or two grams per kilogram of body weight. The thing is, a lot of research and meta-analyses have looked at this and they can seem to agree on a golden number. If you eat it, you'll supposedly get all the gains and be super optimized. And to be honest, I don't think they will ever find one. And that's fine. All the research I've looked at, along with my own experiences, point to a range for protein intake. This range is from 1.5 to 3 grams of protein per kilogram of your fat-free mass. Now, what does free fat mass mean? It's basically your body weight minus the fat. For example, if you weigh 100 kilograms and have 20% body fat, your fat-free mass would be 80 kilograms. So you would calculate your protein needs based on the 80 kilograms. I would recommend a different approach here. Instead of looking for the optimal, we can look at the good enough or almost good enough scenarios. Because at the end of the day, evidence suggests that building muscles depends more on resistance training and training stimulus rather than protein intake. So yes, protein is important, but if you eat enough, you will be fine. Building muscles is a long game anyway, so even if you eat suboptimal amount of protein for a few weeks, it's not gonna be the end of the world and you can still make gains. So let's make this really simple and depending on where you are in your fitness journey, here's what I would recommend. If you've never trained before and you're an absolute beginner, trying to build muscles just for health, not to be a bodybuilder, not to be over-optimized or anything, I would stick to the lower range, anywhere between 1.5 to 1.7 grams per kilogram of fat-free weight. Eating this much protein would be a challenge in itself, so if you go with the upper range, you might get demotivated because most of the days, it will be hard to reach this much. Especially if you're working and or have kids, your life will just be about eating. If you're overweight and trying to lose fat, and again, if you're a beginner, I would start with the lower range, of 1.7 to 2 grams, but try to increase it to the mid-range of 2 to 2.3 grams after a few weeks or months. This will help you in your weight loss journey because of how satiating protein is. It will also help you build and maintain muscles, which will help you burn more fat as you go deeper into your fat loss journey. If you have experience and you're trying to recomp your body, aka build muscles and lose fat, I'll talk about this more in a different video, but here the mid-range should be more than enough. So 2 to 2.3 grams, should be plenty enough for your case. You probably will be in deficit, but this deficit will be very small to achieve the recomp, so you will eat enough calories and muscle loss won't really be an issue for you. Now, if you're well trained and trying to build muscles, then 1.7 to 2 grams per kilogram of fat-free mass is plenty enough. And that's the range I usually eat in my muscle building phases. If you're well trained and on an aggressive weight loss diet, for example, for a competition, then 2.2 to 2.5 grams should cover almost all use cases. Yes, it's better to eat more protein for the anti-hunger effect, but vegetables and fibers have the same effect. So eat your vegetables. Can I be vegan and gain muscles? This brings us to a very contentious point. Protein quality. Does it really matter? What determines the quality of protein is mainly its leucine content. Leucine is an amino acid and amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So the more of these essential amino acids a protein have, the higher its quality. So more leucine equals better quality. So if you want to optimize for muscle building, you will want to increase leucine content as much as possible. But of course, nothing is that simple. Our bodies have a ceiling on how much leucine can be optimized at a given time. Then there is a refractory period, which is around two to three hours, after which you should eat protein again. So if you want to maximize your muscle building potential, you should eat a protein rich meal every two to three hours. This was the consensus up until 2023. This meta analysis here, it showed as we can see in the graph that there are little to no correlation between peak leucine levels and muscle protein synthesis. This suggests that leucine isn't as important 
important as resistance training to maximizing muscle growth. It seems like resistance training raises muscle sensitivity to leucine. This has been shown in a randomized controlled trial where participants were given 30 grams of protein and 2.4 grams leucine, one from a plant-based blend and one from animal protein. As suspected, the plant-based blend led to lower elevations in leucine, but both led to similar elevations in muscle protein sensors. So if you eat a mix of protein sources with different qualities throughout the day, this should be more than enough for maximizing muscle growth. But if you want to be super optimized and only eat high quality protein, I will leave a list of the highest quality proteins in the description box below. With all that said, how much should you eat per meal and how should you distribute it over the day? Until recently, the recommendation was 20 to 25 grams per meal and this was based on a lot of studies in the last 20 years. Until we got the study from Tormelin and colleagues challenging this claim and showing that 100 grams per meal still triggered muscle protein synthesis, post exercise. Now, this study is a great addition to the literature, but I would be more careful to use it at face value. I would like to see if someone else can replicate the results. So my recommendation here would be use one part science and one part bro science. I've always kept the protein in my meals between 20 to 50 grams per meal, and this has worked for me for years and also for my clients. Now I understand that five meals might be too much for you. If that's the case, we have evidence that three meals a day with adequate amount of protein is more than good enough to maximize your muscle growth. We have a study comparing three meals to six meals a day, showing almost no difference between them. So if you are a heavier individual with higher protein requirements and want to eat three meals, there's no way around eating more than the usual 25 grams per meal. You have to go up to 50 or even 70 grams and that's totally fine. There's no evidence suggesting that you will be losing gains here. As for two meals or one meal, here you might be leaving gains on the table. But realistically, it's not that big of a deal if you are not a competitive bodybuilder. But to give an example here, and this works for all genders, if you weigh 70 kilograms and have 15% body fat, your fat-free mass is around 60 kilograms, multiply that by two grams, and you'll have 120 grams per day. If you want to eat three meals, then you're going to eat 40 grams per meal. At the end of the day, what really matters is the total amount of protein you eat in a day not per meal. The 1% or 2% gains that you will get from being over-optimized is not really worth it unless you are a competitive bodybuilder. Protein is just a small piece of the fitness journey game. If you want an overview of what to do next, then check out my two-part series on how to start and navigate your fitness journey right here. See you there.